Hello and what is up YouTube? My name is G3 Iron and in today's 14th episode of our featured weekly build discussion series we are featuring Bowmood's Auto Bomber Herald build. If you want to be able to run through maps like as fast as this guy does then stay tuned for more discussion. You can, of course, like, subscribe, and ding the bell to be notified about more video discussions just like this one. And at this point, there should be above my slightly balding forehead some timestamps for your convenience going over the various discussion points that we have today. Those are, of course, hot linked for you down below in the video description. And if at any point in time you want to reference the path of building or the forum build guide that we are featuring today, all of those links are, of course, also included down below in the video description. So the first thing you might notice about this particular assassin auto bomber build is that the dream set up to work towards is incredibly expensive that's the first thing that i have to put out here right that's our first disclaimer today auto bomber builds are not cheap so if you're thinking oh an auto bomber build it looks really fast it looks really fun how do i league start that you probably shouldn't that's the very first thing that we should say this is a build that you work towards getting various unique items into particular places in order to make the build do exactly what you just saw it do clear a tier 16 map in 25 seconds flat so if you've never played an auto bomber build then there's some very basic mechanics that we need to go over at first but even before we get to that there's got to be more disclaimers and this is because when i actually message this particular build build guide creator Bomu he actually said make sure that you make it very very clear what this build is meant to do and make it very very clear what this build is meant not to do so for you if you are unfamiliar with what an auto bomber does a traditional auto bomber functions by starting and maintaining a quote chain reaction between herald of ice and herald of thunder while this is often easy to do there are many subtle details that go unnoticed or disregarded most of the time resulting in suboptimal and not always enjoyable characters because of this auto bombers are often treated as weaker clear speed oriented builds my intention is to delve right into the nooks and crannies of the build to provide all the relevant information that is available to me. As I was perusing the forums and looking through different auto bomber builds, while we're talking about Delirium League and all of the various uh, pack density that is going to be present in Delirium League, I of course thought this league is going to be tailor made for building auto bomber builds. And so, of course, I wanted to feature one here this week. And with all of the various mechanics that are present, if you are, again, new to this particular mechanic of playing an auto bomber, then you're going to want to pay attention to these next couple of points. First, what the build does, according to Bow Mood, the build is tailored to be one of the fastest and most satisfying builds in the game, capable of tearing through even the highest tiers of maps. By the way, I've actually gone on to Standard and replicated his particular build. I did that this week. Yes, it was ridiculously fun. Yes, it is stupid expensive. And yes, it goes incredibly fast. So I can personally vouch that all of those things are very true. Now, that being said... That's what it can do. What can't it do? Regardless of map mods, for the most part, there is one single exception, and that being monsters have 90% chance to avoid elemental ailments. The entire build revolves around using elemental ailments, and so if we don't have the ability to apply elemental ailments to monsters, nothing is going to explode on the map. So we want to avoid that map mod in particular. Due to the nature of the Herald of Ice Chains, it is best suited to layouts which clump as many packs of monsters together as possible, and thus open areas actually take more time to clear. This is one of the things that I love about this particular build guide, and we will get to it in just a moment, but there are actually going to be map layouts that are more suited to running an auto bomber build than others. Now, for the most part, these maps are going to be referenced to previous leagues and to previous Atlas setups, so you're not going to be able to shape your Atlas like we used to do in 3.8 and prior. However, the principles are still there. You're going to want to look for maps that have layouts that cluster mobs together or force mobs to be together. In other words, the traditional open layout that you might want to do with a clear speed build like let's say I don't know a tornado shot pathfinder or a magic find character that is actually going to be a turn off for this build we want monsters as close together so that way when the chain of herald of ice and herald of thunder actually goes off everything explodes right all of these sequential explosions that happen carry over to one another therefore making our clear speed that much faster because our clear speed is actually dependent and reliant on the pack density and the amount of close monsters together that means that we have to proc less explosions for everything to blow up faster 
Of course, in order to achieve this, Bomood says there is a trade-off between giving up single target abilities and between having clear speed. So there's always ways to circumvent this, but the reality is, is this build is not going to be designed to take out, let's say, Uber Elder, Shaper, Edziri, even Uber Zaro it might struggle with. The new Cirrus boss it's going to struggle with. Are there ways that you could adjust this particular build? Absolutely. If you've got the currency to fill out this build, then you're going to be able to adjust exactly how you want to build this uh, assassin and essentially have an alternate set of gear that you could use to take down those bosses however the build as it is constructed presently is not designed to do all of those bosses it's designed to speed through maps to chain those maps as quickly as possible and to kill as many monsters in as little time as possible as we get into the particular choice of ascendancy for this particular build boo actually recommends four particular nodes to take in a very particular style and then of course he offers an alternate way of actually leveling up your ascendancy choices if you're more familiar with auto bombers in general so his first recommendation is for you to go and grab ambush and assassinate first this gives you 20 percent more damage with hits and ailments against enemies that are on low life it also gives you 40 percent to critical strike multi against enemies that are on full life then 100% more critical strike chance against enemies that are on full life and 100% more critical strike chance against enemies that are on low life then your critical strikes will have calling strike essentially this is what allows you to one shot various monsters as you are interacting with them because the first time that you hit them you are getting a massive massive damage boost and you're getting as much of a damage boost on full life as you are on low life so regardless of whether enemies are full or low you are doing a massive amount of damage to them now when enemies are in that in-between stage that's when this build doesn't shine and that's one of the reasons why when you're fighting bosses particularly bosses who have got phases or just have ridiculous amounts of hp the build falls off because one of the hallmark ascendancy points of the build isn't going to perform well in those particular situations. Your second lab choice is going to be Unstable Fusion. This is going to give you 10% chance to gain a power charge on Critical Strike as well as 20% chance to gain a power charge on Non-Critical Strike. This essentially means that you're just always generating power charges and of course it gives you one additional maximum power charge overall. Now Unstable Infusion isn't that isn't really all that great of a node and isn't really worth writing home about if it didn't lead to deadly infusion deadly infusion gives us plus eight percent to critical strike multi per power charge which before you've applied any other power charges to your build because you've already got unstable infusion plus your base three you're talking four power charges which means you've already got just 32 percent to crit strike multi right away when you're at full power charges then on top of that you've got a two percent critical strike chance while at maximum power charge during this third ascendancy this is where you can effectually change your build over and actually start to equip various pieces of your build that will be your end game iteration and you can really actually start progressing the build as an auto bomber up until you get this particular node it's really really tough to play as an auto bomber because you're simply not going to have the needed crit in order to constantly be applying the elemental ailments that you need in order to get the herald of ice and herald of thunder chains to actually proc For the Uber Lab, your last ascendancy point is going to be opportunistic, and I love what Boo says about this. He says that opportunistic should actually be named harder, better, faster, because this is essentially a win more node. You get 20% increased movement speed if you've killed recently. Damage from your critical strikes cannot be reflected. 20% more damage while there is at most one rare or unique enemy nearby, and then you get 10% reduced damage taken while there are at least two rare or unique enemies nearby. If you just want to rush through the 10x story campaign then boo actually offers this as a suggestion take opportunistic first simply because it's going to give you a whole bunch of movement speed and allow you to rush things faster but other than that this is going to be that last node that you're going to get on your ascendancy tree in order to round out all of your options and go as quickly as you can blowing up as many monsters in as short a time as possible regarding the rest of the passive tree you're going to want to head up onto the top right of the passive side of the tree and you're going to want to grab an additional frenzy charge and additional power charge make your way eventually over into this entire life uh, as well as energy shield wheel for written in blood eventually making your way all the way up to the top side of this jewel node which presently is being used as pure talent viridian jewel however in the future with delirium league with the expansion of these new jewels that
that we're going to have and the ability to expand out your passive tree and actually build in essentially customized passive trees. I think this is going to be an option and a very, very easy pickup for this particular build to expand its tree with the various crit as well as with the various herald buffs that we already know are going to be available through the new passive nodes in Delirium. Of course, we're a crit build, so we're going to come over and grab Throat Seeker, as well as grab the rest of the Power Charge nodes that we can grab, and upwards of five to six different jewel passive nodes as we can pick them up along our way over to the Templar side of the tree. The Templar side of the tree is going to provide us with a whole bunch of elemental damage, as well as some options if we want to fill out some more tankiness with either a mixture of life and energy shield, or just pumping up the life and putting more passives in into damage. I mentioned it earlier that Boo does a great job of actually sharing with us different layouts to consider for farming with this particular build and so here is that particular list. First off you're looking at beaches, you're looking at gorge, you're looking at toxic sewer, you're looking at waste pool, you're looking at again shape toxic sewer. Again these are references to an older version of the atlas and to an older version of atlas strategies but the principles still apply here. You want areas where pack density is very very thick and where the monsters that do spawn in those areas are going to be close enough together that your chain reactions will carry from pack to pack to pack. So those of you who remember running auto bombers or just running quick clear speed builds when Shape Strand was the meta, that's something that probably won't be that great moving forward into Delirium League even if there is a ton of density simply because it's too wide open. You want something where monsters are forced to be grouped up into a semi constructed strained area and for this reason I would actually also want to add onto this particular list the haunted mansion map. I think that's a great map if you're looking for something that gives you essentially corridors where monsters are forced to be packed up or forced to be pushed together. It's not a very linear map and so you'd have to be aware of that but that's one that I know I have farmed personally in the past and it does very very well for auto bomber builds. You might be asking why this particular build uses a sword like rippling thoughts. I mean why go for a unique sword that's got relatively low overall DPS when you could just go for a rare that's going to give you way better DPS? Well, the answer simply is, is that we're not relying on the damage of the sword. We're relying on the spell damage that the sword is going to give us. And of course, most of our damage in and of itself in our character is reliant upon our heralds actually proccing and chaining. So by using the Rippling Thought Sword, we actually get the Summon Harbinger of the Arcane skill, which this summons an Immortal Harbinger minion, and he occasionally will simply grant us Arcane Surge, which gives us more more spell damage, more cast speed, and better mana regeneration. Now, if you really, really want to, you can, of course, just swap over to your own Arcane Surge setup, but the Arcane Surge that the Harbinger of the Arcane gives you is the same effect as a level 21 Arcane Surge support gem. So that is a massive, massive bonus to the quality of life that your character will feel when you've got that particular buff active simply through using this particular unique sword. On top of this wonderful extra additional of essentially passive skill of having arcane surge you also get storm cascade which is effectively a lightning version of a level 21 glacial cascade that goes off when you attack which of course we're using shield charge in order to zip around and zoom around which means we are constantly massively damaging anything that is in front of us thanks to this level 21 equivalent version of storm cascade which is Glacial Cascade. In the shield slot, we want to use Zeal's Amplifier. This is for a couple of different reasons. One, it gives us some additional spell damage. It gives us a little bit of life and a little bit of energy shield. That's kind of nice. But really, the biggest part of Zeal's Amplifier is that you get 1% increased area of effect per enemy killed recently, up to 50%. This is a massive amount of AoE that is going to continually stack as you eventually reach its eventual top end side of the build, meaning that you are going to have even larger areas of effect for your chains to go off. So as monsters do end up being inevitably spread out from time to time, the more AoE you have, the more coverage you've got for both of your various chain reactions to go off through Herald of Ice and Herald of Thunder. The most essential thing that this particular build needs in its itemization slot is of course the coming Calamity Destroyer Regalia. If you've never played an Auto Bomber build, this is the unique piece that actually makes the entire build tick. So 
What does this chess piece do? Well, it's got nothing special in terms of the energy shield or life or defensive mechanisms that it gives you, but it actually turns your build from a worthless attempt at an auto bomber into a full fledged auto bomber. So you get plus two to levels of socketed herald gems straight up right away. That's just fantastic. On top of this, you also have a 35% chance to avoid being stunned for each Herald skill that is affecting you. That's just a nice defensive bonus. And then, of course, comes the second really hallmark portion of this particular unique, which is that mana reservation of Herald skills is always 45%. Now, at first, you might be wondering and saying, well, what's the big deal about that? Who really cares? Why does it matter? Well, typically, builds will only have Heralds set up on a 1 or a 2 link, and that messes with your mana reservation a little bit. With this particular build, we are going to have multiple, multiple links set up with each of our particular heralds. One of them being set up on a four link, which is really a pseudo six link if you get the appropriate helm, and an actual full on six link socketed right here in the coming calamity. Try running a build without using the coming calamity and making sure that your mana reservation can actually deal with the amount of mana multiplier that is going to be increased by having a six linked herald inside your chess piece. It's going to be very, very difficult to actually try to manage that moving forward if you try to play this build without the coming calamity. I just wouldn't recommend it. Grab a coming calamity. They're typically pretty cheap because they're not necessarily in high demand. It's not necessarily a meta particular unique item. It might be in the upcoming Delirium League, so I would say grab one early if you're planning on playing an auto bomber at any point in time because if the league does shift into that particular direction in terms of popularity of auto bombers coming back, then grabbing one early saves you time later on from saving up currency and spending big. While there are a lot of different options for flasks on this particular build, including Aziri's Promise and Wise Oak and even more, I just want to point out this one very, very nice unique that gives you a lot of different defensive options, and that is called Kiara's Determination. It's a silver flask. It only lasts for a few seconds. I believe the base, even at 20 quality, is, is very, very low. But the reality is, is the value that you get out of this particular unique flask is definitely worth it for the slot that it occupies and especially for the cost. These things are like a chaos or two. You become immune to chill, immune to freeze, immune to curses, and immune to stuns during the flask effect. In other words, you don't have to worry about ever getting stopped because you were stunned as you are moving along and speeding through a particular map. That is massive. You never have to worry about opening up a chest and it accidentally freezing you. You never have to worry about a monster cursing you and therefore you all of a sudden don't have capped out resistances. You don't have to worry about getting cursed and getting slowed down via temporal chains. You can simply be going at your maximum speed that you would desire, immune from all of those hassles whenever you've got Kiara's Determination active. And of course you're going to have it active basically all the time because anytime you you actually hit anything you're going to crit and anytime you crit your chain is going to go off and anytime your chain is going to go off there's going to be two or three dozen explosions on your screen notifying you hey all of your flasks you just used they're probably full again because you blew up half of the screen if you really want to go big bonkers expensive jewels with your watcher's eye you can this is a double hatred watcher's eye that gives you crit strike chance that's to your base strike chance which will affect your heralds as well as gives you damage penetration while affected by hatred but the other thing that's really nice on this particular watcher's eye is simply the flat reduction of mana cost of skills while you're affected by clarity this is quite nice to make sure that your uh, particular movement skill and your procking skill which is shield charge never runs out of mana now i've mentioned it a couple of times that we want our heralds linked up into a four link and a six link our four link is going to be herald of ice with added lightning damage power charge on critical and ice bite this four link we want set up into a rare shaped helmet in order to turn it into a pseudo five link, six link, or maybe even seven link if it's ridiculously like the perfect helmet of all time, then it would turn into a pseudo eight link. The particular links that you are looking for and the affixes that you want impacting your Herald of Ice are going to be in this particular order. Socketed spells have plus to critical strike chance. Socketed gems are supported by increased area of effect. Socketed gems are supported by innervate and socketed gems deal percentage more elemental damage. Boo actually reminds us that if you can get two of the following of these on a helmet, then you're doing a great job. He, of course, has got this absolutely sick helmet that has just got everything that you could ever want <laughs> on a helmet for an auto bomber. For our six link setup inside our 
coming Calamity chess piece. We want Herald of Thunder with Empower, which raises up our Herald of Thunder level, base level even further. Then we want Lightning Penetration along with Increased Critical Strikes, Added Cold Damage, and Power Charge on Critical. As you are zooming through maps, you'll of course accumulate plenty of Vol Souls for you to be able to proc off Vol Haste, making your character go that much faster. And the rounding out of the rest of your mana reservations are dumped into Hatred, as well as a level 1 Clarity, just to give you that impacted ability uh, of minus total cost of your skills while you are affected by Clarity. If you're not using that particular Watcher's Eye, then this isn't that big of a deal, but a level 1 Clarity is nice because it gives you a little bit of mana regen. Well, thank Thanks so much for watching our 14th episode of our weekly featured build discussion series. And of course, if you've got any comments or thoughts below about how auto bombers are going to perform in Delirium, or if you've tried out an auto bomber like this, or maybe even this particular auto bomber, feel free to drop us a comment down below with any feedback, ideas, or suggestions that you may have. And of course, I hope that Delirium League is a league that a Mirror of Calandra drops for you. Thanks for watching that video. If you'd like more information on any of our discussion points today, you can see them down below in the video description. If you'd also like to join our Discord or support our Patreon, you can do so with the links down below. Thanks again and big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters.